where the remote jobs at? How do you get a remote job doing the same work that you do now so that you can bop around the country, the world? Where are the remote jobs? You're in the right place. I talked to five Black women about their remote work. I talked to them about what they do remotely, how they got the remote jobs, and how their job is different being remote than it was when they were in office. Make sure that you stick around to the end because at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a couple of really good resources to help you in your remote work life, to help you find remote work and enjoy the life of a remote employee. But first, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Stephanie Perry. I am a year-round house sitter. I'm the creator of House Sitter School, and I help Black women take a sabbatical or move abroad on a budget. If that sounds good to you, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications, ring that notification bell so that you will be notified when I post a new video. Welcome. If you're already subscribed to my channel, you're probably already interested in taking some time to leave the United States for your own peace of mind, for your own sanity, and maybe for your own um, financial gain. Uh, remote work is a way that a lot of the women do this. I've already um, done a live stream video where women from the community shared what they did for a living so that they could afford to travel full time or so that they could afford to move abroad. And a lot of the answers, a lot of the responses in that video, uh, which is called, what kind of work do y'all do? I think it's called that. I'll link to that in the description. A lot of the answers were, I just took the job that I already had remote. Okay, so we're, you're going to hear from some women here about how to do that, either by keeping the same employer and asking them about the possibility of you being a, becoming a full time remote employee or by moving to an employer who is remote friendly. But I don't want to spoil it. Okay, so I'm going to let them talk. Welcome, Kiki. Hello. All right. So tell us about your remote job. Tell us what you do and, and uh, where you are in the world. I am in the Dallas Fort Worth area in Texas. Um, so yeah, I've been in Texas for a long time, for like over 20 years. What do I do? I'm currently an accountant for a security company. My company is based out of Toronto, but they have offices all over the country and, and also two offices internationally. Okay, wonderful. Was so were you an accountant before you got this job? Is this your first accounting job or have you been an accountant? No, I've been an accountant for a long time in, in different roles. I had a job working for uh, hotels, Hilton, and, uh, Hilton Hotels. I, I worked in a corporate in Dallas. And during the pandemic, I lost my job. They laid off 300 people. And I was one of the people that unfortunately with the hotel industry, we were, we were laid off. Okay. Okay. And so then you were, were you intentionally looking for a remote job or is it just that all the jobs during the pandemic were remote anyway? I was not looking for a remote job. I was unemployed probably for about 10 months. I was unemployed. Um, during that time, I actually had back surgery. I had major spinal surgery. Um, when I lost my job, unfortunately, I lost my insurance benefits. And so my back surgery was delayed. Like it was to the point where I could barely get out of bed. Um, so I had nine months once I finally, thank you, Obamacare. But once I finally got insurance and had my surgery during the pandemic, which was dangerous, I was, I was in the hospital over, uh, over a week. Mm -hmm. And, and I had nine months of physical therapy three times a week. So I couldn't take any kind of job. So I was kind of looking for a remote job because I was still going to physical therapy and then they're, then they're about to cut off my unemployment benefits in Texas. And so I was just looking for really in a, any type of job, but I prefer to be remote um, to work with my physical therapy schedule. And also I'm a, I own three Etsy shops. So I was doing that as well. I still do that. I still have three Etsy shops, but I found a job. Yes. That, that fortunately for me was, is, is, is a remote job. Good. Okay. How's your back? Oh, my back is much better. No, it must be I can actually take my kids' place now. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, so let's let's talk about how you found this remote job. How did you find this remote job? Um, on Indeed, I, I was applying on Monster and Indeed, and there are there are tons of um, accounting jobs. There was like a huge boom even now in, in in accounting jobs, and I found the job. And then they 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 had it listed in there that it was 
possibly remote, um, but I really wasn't looking at that. But then once I interviewed, they told me that they were, the company was going into a direction that all corporate people would be remote. Wonderful. Okay, so let's talk about what remote means for them. They're based in Toronto yes. and you are in Texas. So what does, does remote mean that you need to be in a certain state, in a certain country, or do they not care? No, they, they didn't really care. It, it, it's specific based on position. So they have like the salespeople are like in California. And then this group is like in Alabama. The accounting people are based and the legal people are based in Texas. So, so that's how it's always been. And it was, was before the pandemic that they were in the office in Dallas, but because mm -hmm. of their needs during the pandemic, they said, you know, all, pretty much all the corporate office people uh, nationwide are, are doing remote positions. Are they planning to bring you back into the office or is this, or are they now remote for good? Or we, um, we were told in September that, that we were gonna try to work a hybrid schedule where we would go in maybe one or two or three days a week. Then Omicron happened <laughs> and then they were like, and then I went into the office one time and then I realized that they had moved all of our stuff. <laughs> And we were told that we pretty much don't have a desk or an office. I don't have an office anymore. They gave it to another department. And so we're not, we're not going back. <laughs> okay. All right. That's good. But yeah. it doesn't mean, yes, this, but this doesn't mean you can bop around the, the country or even the world with this yeah. particular job. That with my particular job, because of our base being in Toronto, if I ever would want to leave the country, that's probably where I would go. I would still be remote. I could still, if they're like, if you ever want to come to Toronto, we will sponsor you. We will get you up here. If you want to move and relocate up here, they offer that um, for us as well. Okay. How interested in, our, in that are you? Very. <laughs> Good. Very. I've been wanting to travel and get out of the United States for a long time. Um, so that's something I seriously would have been thinking about um, moving to Canada and being Canadian based and being here. Here's a little bit too. Yeah. I, I think we're looking at, that's why I watch your videos because I'm looking to make a change. But if they said, if I did want to live somewhere else other than Canada, I could, I could still keep my job and go live abroad somewhere else. As long as I had the internet service, they were saying in, in the schedule, I was with their schedule and their time zone, then I, I could possibly keep my job, yes. That's wonderful because a lot of remote positions are remote, yes, but you need to be in this state or remote, but you need yes. to be in this region. So that's good to know that there is flexibility. So a pro tip, uh, if you want to be remote and move and either go abroad or bop around, go remote with a company that is already international, right? Go with a company yes. that's already, yeah, that gives you a little extra flexibility. Yes, especially if they're supportive. They're, they're willing to help you get housing and, and relocate then that's good. They said, you want to come to Toronto? We'll help you relocate. We'll get you housing set up, all of that. So if I want to go to Toronto. That's wonderful. Okay. How do you feel about winter? Oh, I'm from Michigan. So it's fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm from Michigan. It's fine. I'm good. Okay. You can do it. You, can do it. you don't have to. I want you to know you don't have to. We do not have to experience winter weather, but yeah. if you're okay with it, it's okay. <laughs> All right. So accounting has uh, like different certifications and different levels and different layers. Is there any type of certification that you have that made it easier for you to get remote work? Yes. Before with my old company, I was actually in school. They were paying for my schooling. So not only did I lose my job, but I lost my schooling as well. So, uh -huh. yeah. So I lost my surgery. I lost my health benefits and I lost my schooling. But I was able to um, I have a business I have certification in like Microsoft and, and all of that and business administration certification. So thank God I had that from my my previous uh, job. But really, they were just looking for somebody with experience. A lot of these jobs out here, I tell people all the time, they are they you know, people think you got to have a bachelor degree to be an accountant or a CPA. No, you do not. If you've worked in different positions and different companies, you have experience. I, I do. I'm I'm a, I'm a little old, I'm a little older, so <laughs> I, I'm 45. So I, I've had many years of experience in different types of accounting, and they were like, "Okay, we need somebody experienced right now," and they're hiring quickly. <laughs>
That's also good to know. Okay. Because the CPA, from what I understand, is not like a fun experience, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> through the CPA, you didn't, okay. So that's good to know. Experience over um, like formal education and formal like yes. certification. Yes, indeed. Good. Okay. So let's see. What did we not answer that someone who is um, considering applying for a remote accounting position might want to know? Um. Uh, I would say for somebody who's applied for a lot of positions, a lot of people ask about the process. It was a very, there are so many accounting jobs out here that the process is really quick. Mm -hmm. I interviewed with other companies that were pretty much sending over the background check after the first interview. They were oh, like, gosh. yeah, we like you background check. If you pass the background check, they brought me in for a second interview like the next day and they were ready to hire me. When I got my job, I literally had four or five offers lined up and they were mostly remote positions. And I just pick whichever one paid me the most money <laughs> and we're more flexible with my schedule. So I tell people the accounting field is really hot right now. There's a lot of flexibility. There's really, I mean, there's people out there giving out signing bonuses. I got a signing bonus when I started with my job. Um, so it's, it's out there and they're hiring quickly. They're at very, very fast turnover. So you don't have to wait weeks or months or to get a call back. No, these people are hiring like in a week. Wonderful. So, okay, so let's answer the question for someone with zero accounting experience. Where does she start? What's the first? What's the first step? For zero accounting experience, I had a friend that was looking for um, jobs out there. There are customer service jobs out there. There are data entry jobs from home. Um, where I where I live, I can't speak for anywhere else, but the cost of living here is good, really good in Texas. So mm -hmm. they're looking for people just to enter data, and they're starting them out at like twenty twenty two an hour. My friend, her daughter got a job working remote as a data entry, and mm -hmm. she's twenty years old, making twenty two dollars an hour. She was previously working at at uh, a fast food restaurant. <laughs> Yeah. And she's going to school and she's like, why am I doing this? Why am I working at this fast food place when she can be making $22 an hour part time? That's right. It, it makes so it hard. Why am I working harder when yes. I can do this? Yeah. Let me do the sit down job. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Is data entry an, an entry way into accounting? It is very much so. Customer service and data entry is how I started in accounting a long, long time ago. Um, I was lucky enough to work. I worked for a, pre, a, a really huge company. I won't say I worked there for eight years and I started at the bottom and worked my way all the way up to an HR uh, manager. So I started from a lowly customer service person on the phone to accounting. I learned everything I could out of accounting and then I just moved my way up through the company. So that's how I got an road. And then I started to go to school because I went to school for journalism. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm a journalism major. So yeah, I, I don't, have the degrees in accounting. I have degrees in writing and communications. So I, I totally had to jump ship because of life happened. I got married and had kids and journalism didn't really pay. So they don't really pay the bills. No. no. Accounting pays the bills. Still don't. No. Okay, yeah. wonderful, Kiki. Okay, so thank you very much for sharing. If someone is like, okay, um, I appreciate what she's, the information she's given us. Now I want to watch her as she uh, contemplates moving to Toronto or wherever. <laughs> Where should people follow you? Where should they go on the internet to follow you? Yes, I have an Instagram. Um, my Instagram is primarily, my Instagram is focused on my business, but it's me too. It's just, I'll post some things about my kid. Um, it's Falling Star Naturals with an S media, all one word, Falling Star Naturals media. I have a YouTube channel. I've been guest stars on other people's <laughs> YouTubes. Um, uh, it's the infamous Kiki, all one word, the infamous Kiki. I talk about my, my life, my kids, viral topics, just whatever I, I feel like, because I like talking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that sounds familiar. All right. <laughs> I'm linking to Kiki's Instagram and to Kiki's YouTube channel in the description of this video. So make sure you click down so that you can follow and subscribe. All right, Kiki, this was wonderful. Thank you very much for being so helpful. Thank you. No problem. Of course. Hi. Welcome, Angela. Hi. All right. So tell us, what, what is your remote job? What do you do? So I am a account manager slash bookkeeper. Um, I work in the the entertainment field so we do accounting and um bookkeeping and basically anything that has to do with money for entertainers themselves um so yeah That's 
Yeah. <laughs> really cool. So does an accountant or bookkeeper for in the entertainment field make more than an accountant in uh, a different in healthcare, for example? Um, at my level, yes. Ah. Yeah, I think that doing what I do, um, if I were to be doing it in a different field, I don't know if I'd be making as much money so quickly. Okay. All right. Yeah. So how did you get this particular remote job? How did, how did it happen? <laughs> So this became remote because of the pandemic. Uh -huh. um, as, my office is based in Los Angeles. So as soon as they shut down, our office shut down immediately. Um, LA has more strict kind of guidelines right now as it pertains to the pandemic. So my office hasn't um, opened up fully. Um, I don't think they're going to right now. It sounds like they're just doing voluntary hybrid, which I have no desire to do. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. So then you got the, you got the remote job because you were already there and they went remote. So how did you get this job? How did you find out about this particular company? So it's, it's, uh, it kind of convoluted type of story. Um, so I got into this field in like 2018, 2017. Um, I specifically was gearing towards it. When I went back to school for accounting, I knew I did not want to do traditional accounting. Um, I actually wanted to work with athletes. Um, I didn't know how to go about it. So I was just kind of looking up stuff online. I randomly applied to a job, didn't know what it was. And when they responded back to me, I found out it was what I wanted to do, entertainment uh, accounting work. So um, I got my first job at a very small firm um, in downtown LA. It was just me and two other people working there. And that was basically how I got my foot in the door. Um, with this field, it's almost like once you get in, you can kind of move around to different firms pretty easily. Um, so once I got my foot in the door, I basically had recruiters reading, reaching out to me on LinkedIn because they saw that I had that experience. Um, and at that time I had only had like six months experience and they were still reaching out to me. Oh. Um, but so yeah, once I got into a different firm, I had somebody recruit me on LinkedIn, um, the firm that I was previously at she moved to Seattle and left me in LA. And I was just kind of like, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm going to leave. <laughs> and I went to another firm, um, worked with them for about a year and a half. And the partner that I was working for, um, he decided to move. And when he moved our group, either we had to go with him or find a new job. Okay. So um, I decided to go with him and that's how I ended up where I am now, where they eventually moved to remote. Okay. So. Okay. So we, you're not the first person who has talked about their network um, getting them to where they are today, right? The people in the field who, you know, and any, no matter what field you work in, it's a small world. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Very small. Very uh -huh. small. And then especially being a black woman in this field, um, it's, for me, it's kind of been easier just because um, I was able to find Black women who were at higher levels and kind of talk to them and help, they helped me kind of like navigate and figure out where I wanted to be and teach me a lot of things that other places weren't really teaching me. So that um, being a Black woman in this field specifically has been kind of an advantage. Wonderful. Which is I'm not normal. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. In some areas, there would probably be more uh, like a competitive nature. And in some fields, there just aren't Black women to help you, right? Just, yeah. Yeah. That is true. They've pushed them out. They've already pushed all the Black women out. There's nobody there to help to, to you know, mentor you or anything. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you yeah. So I'm let's really talk like about. It. Yeah, let's talk about remote life for you compared to when you went in the office. How has work changed? What, what's different about your work, your day, now that you're remote? Um, my days feel longer. <laughs> I feel like I'm just always in front of a computer. But um, even with that, I still don't mind it. I mean, the nature of this work, accounting, I think no matter what field, 
um, the bulk of the work is on the computer. Like mm -hmm. everything we do is software based. Um, so you don't really need to be in an office. Um, I think the only thing I kind of miss about being in an office is being able to just walk to somebody and ask them a question rather than waiting forever. Um, the partner that I work for in particular kind of takes his time responding back. So when we were in the office, it was a little easier to get questions answered. But honestly, other than that, like, I love being remote. I love not having to deal with traffic. I love not having to deal with getting dressed and, you know, doing all the extras. I can just be at home in comfort. That not deal with traffic is big for you in LA. It, oh my gosh. I had some moves. So I'm from Long Beach, uh, California. Okay. My office was in LA and I was commuting. At the time when I lived in LA, I was working two jobs. So I was doing the accounting and then on the weekend I worked, uh, I'm a nail tech, I'm a licensed nail tech. So I was doing that on the weekend. So I was working seven days a week in Los Angeles and I was in traffic every single day. So I had to move to LA just to kind of cut it down a little bit, but I was still in like an hour of traffic a day. Mm -mm. And it was just mm -mm. terrible. It like wears you down. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does. So let's talk about the, so what are you doing? So, okay, let's change gears. Okay. I know we can talk about one thing, but you have a prioritizing piece behind you. And you've talked oh, yeah. about how being remote uh, means that you are in front of the computer all day. So what are you going to do going forward to distinguish work hours from personal hours? I think this is important for people who work remotely. I am a coach. I have my laptop open all day. Now, logistics. So like seriously, I'm probably working like an hour a day, but it feels like my work day is really long because I'm in front of my laptop all day. So what are we doing going forward so that this is not, work is not taking over our day? That is a good question. Cause I, I do the same thing where it's like, I'm in front of my computer all day, but if I really, and which I have to do for work, we have to, um, Mm -hmm. bill our hours by each mm -hmm. client and so when I'm going back I'm like I don't think I did that much work <laughs> but I've been sitting here all day so <laughs> it feels like I'm working all day but mm -hmm. I've been trying lately to like so I do out here I'm able to afford more in Arizona it's much cheaper than California so I have like a two-bedroom mm -hmm. and so I have my office my bedroom, my living room, everything separated out. So I've been trying to like leave the office, go into like the living room to have like 30 minutes to an hour to myself, even if it's just to have lunch. Cause before I would just eat my lunch at my desk. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been trying to do that. Been trying to go on work, uh, walks, been getting a little cold, but um, going on walks and then um, Lately, I've been kind of traveling a little bit more and working. So when I'm doing that, it's much easier because I'm like, okay, from 10 to noon, I'm working from noon to whatever I'm exploring and then I'm coming back and working. So that's been easier. Um, but when I'm at home, I don't know, it's been, it's been difficult. I tell myself to get up and go for a walk and then I don't. <laughs> like. Yeah, that's that's a struggle. I think that that's the main um, drawback of remote work. You are spending more of your hours doing either work or like work adjacent tasks. Yeah. Than you would if you got to go to work and then leave. Yeah. I fix that in my own my own life. We're gonna fix this, okay? We're gonna not, have to. Not, I really I thought about it too because when I was in the office, um, I used to like get up and go for walks like around the building or just to see um, the company I'm with now, we actually, I started there in February, 2020. So right before the oh. pandemic. Um, and when I first started, it was like a new area. I had never been there. So I would just get up and like walk around and explore. And I'm just like, why don't I do that here? Like I'm in a new area here too. Like I could get up and explore. It's just, I don't know why it, it feels so different to do yeah. that. Yeah, we're going to fix this, Angela. We're not going to keep this. Yes. We can't. <laughs> we can't. Okay, so, so speaking of, um, like, well, you, we're talking remote work. How remote are you allowed to be? Where do you have to be in order to work? 
What are the rules for your employer? Honestly, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I just kind of go and I'm just like, hey guys, I'm in Denver. Um, but I mean, so our, our the way it's structured is kind of weird. So we're a, kind of a smaller firm. I work with a small team, but we have a parent company that owns us and they have all of our software. So um, we signed into their VPN, everything is with them. So I went to Italy actually, and I tried to work and it blocked me out of everything. Yes, okay. (laughs) So I had to call them and like let them know where I was and how long I was gonna be there. And then they just, they did it for me. So it seems like as long as I tell them ahead of time, I can kind of be anywhere. Um, I'm pretty sure I can't leave for like a long period of time. Okay. And that changes the tax structure of how I'm set up. But um, I mean, I don't know. It hasn't seemed to be a problem. Like I said, they're in LA. I'm in Arizona and they're fine with me. I mean, I hope they know I'm never coming back. But (laughs) (laughs) they seem to be fine with me being out here. (laughs) All right. Fantastic. Okay. So do you have any future plans to do some bopping around when things are better? Any plans to try a different, instead of moving to another state, move to another country or? Yes, actually because of your channel and you know, seeing you <laughs> and uh, Cheetahs on the Loose and Picky Girl Travels, all of that, I am dead set on Mexico. Yes. Um, a few years ago, I randomly won a trip to Mexico. So I went to Cabo and I just fell in love. And I was like, I love it here. I want to look up more. I found you guys' YouTube channel. And now I'm like, I want at least a year in Mexico um, to kind of see what area. But I'm pretty much dead set on like moving there, building a house and just being there. (laughs) I recommend it. I recommend it. Okay. So is the nail tech life um, something that could take you abroad? Or do you think, or, or do you think your job, the job that you have today, could, could take you to Mexico, right? Do you think it's possible to keep that job or would you have to look for something else? I don't know. I think it would depend on um, kind of what my role becomes. Okay. As of right now, excuse me, it's not, it doesn't seem to be like it would be a problem I don't know they're very weird about stuff even when I asked them to move to Arizona they were acting weird about it and then eventually they're just like yeah it's fine so I think in terms of the way taxes are set up that would be the only hurdle with this job in particular um so that's why I'm not really sure but I'm already made up my mind that if they were to say no, I would just find something else. My background makes it to where I can find another job (laughs) easily and easily do it remote. That's right. Yes. Take advantage of your advantages. That's right. Yeah, (laughs) most definitely. Accounting and before accounting, I was doing payroll and both of those can easily be done remote. So I'm like, I have so many options. (laughs) Good. Okay. It's good to have options and, but it's not good to have options if you don't exercise them, if you don't even acknowledge them and then exercise them, right? Acknowledge those those privileges, those options, and then use them to your advantage. I'm down with that. Okay. (laughs) What did we not cover? What would someone who is looking to, who was working, yeah, looking for remote work, uh, what do they need to know? I think if you're looking for remote work, um, I would say don't be afraid to ask. Um, I've noticed for my field in particular, when they are um, posting the jobs, a lot of them don't say remote. Mm -hmm. They say in the office, but if it's this field in particular, accounting, uh, finance, Uh, payroll, anything like that, it can be done remote because literally your job is on a computer. So I would say if you're looking and you don't see it, but your skill sets match, I would say uh, apply and then just ask. And if they say no, um, be confident enough that your skills can take you somewhere else to somebody who will say yes. (laughs) Very, very good point. Wonderful point. Yes. 
Yeah. If, if you don't ask, it's always a no. It's already a no, right? So, exactly. Yeah. And I learned kind of the hard way. I mean, I say that, but there was a time where I would never ask. But with this job, they they never said we would be 100% remote. They never said anything. And I was just like, I kept bugging them until they finally were just like, oh, fine, go. Yes. <laughs> fine. I'm tired of talking about this. <laughs> yeah. I was bugging them like every few weeks. And then finally, I just didn't even ask. I was like, hey, my lease is up and I want to leave. So what are y'all doing? <laughs> pressured them into it. Okay. And then was there one, did they seem to have one particular um, like sticking point, one particular thing that they were like, eh, here's our concern. Did they express any any single concern? Or they they just- didn't. Okay. They didn't. They were just kind of like, oh, we'll re- revisit it later. I think they were trying to see um, what the parent company was going to do. Mm-hmm. I think the firm themselves were kind of like, whatever. But, okay. you know, having that extra layer, they had to worry about that. And then when I did move, they did kind of change some stuff with my role. Um, when we first went remote, the clients that I work with in particular are at a different bank than our other clients. So they had to like, with my role, anything that has to do with money, I'm handling it. So I'm depositing their checks, I'm paying their bills, I'm doing everything. So they basically had to send me checks to do mobile deposit and all of that. So when I moved out the state, they were like, we can't send checks like (laughs) across the state, we can't do all that kind of stuff. So that kind of stuff. if they were concerned with it before they didn't say anything but once it happened they were definitely like we can't we can't do that (laughs) okay but they made that adjustment Mm -hmm. no yeah okay i'm glad to hear it i'm glad that worked for you yeah Um, yeah. we have to ask right we have to ask uh we we decide where we want to be in our lives and then we have these other things bend around that instead of us bending our wants to a job. I, I ain't into that. I'm not into that. <laughs> I had to learn. This pandemic taught me like your work should revolve around your life, not your life revolve around your work. And it definitely having that change in mindset helped me do it. And even with asking them, I kind of not kind of I knew in the back of my mind, like if they say no, mm-hmm. I am quitting and I'm finding a job that fits the life that I want to live. And uh, thankfully, they didn't say no because they pay me well and I enjoy the job. But I would have easily left. Like, I got options. Yeah. <laughs> Even Nels. Nels is always an option. So That's right. those two things, it's like, I'll be fine. That's exactly right. Okay. Thank you so much, Angela. This was wonderful. Tell, no uh, let people know where, if they want to follow you and snoop in on what's happening with you. Where uh, can you can follow you? my nail page on Instagram. It's a uh, fly nail girl. Um, I'm not doing other people's nails right now. So it's just mine. But every time I go to a new place, I take a little nail fee with my nails and like, you know, some Roman church in the background. <laughs> oh, that's super cute. Oh, yeah. Of course, I am linking to Angela's Instagram uh, page here on in the description. So go find her in the description. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. This was awesome. No problem. Thank you so much. It was nice meeting you. Welcome, Jamaria. Uh, tell us, <laughs> what is your remote job? What do you do? Yeah, so my remote job, and I don't mind saying the employer, I work for uh, Humana. So I do clinical services. So I'm a pharmacy technician and I do uh, just mail-in services when patients call in and they need their medication shipped out to them. I make sure that the address is correct and the medication is correct. And I reach out to the doctor's office to get new scripts for patients. So that's what I do as a pharmacy technician oh, remotely through uh, for mail-in. So this is so exciting to me. Okay, so I was a pharmacy techni- technician in the army, and then I was a pharmacy technician again uh, when I had my last t- <laughs> my last time having a job, and it never occurred to me that there were pharmacy technicians working remotely, right? Because my job was to put pills in the bottle or to shoot drugs into the IV bag for the patients in the hospital. So I'm so excited to hear about this. Can you tell me, were you a pharmacy technician before, or is this your first tech job? Okay, so actually an interesting story with that. So I actually used to live in Minneapolis, Minnesota for four years. Um, I went to school up there. So I got my degree in graphic design, actually. And I worked at Best Buy headquarters up there. But I'm actually born and raised in Ohio. 
So after I, after I graduated, I moved back to Ohio and I couldn't find a job uh, within my field within Ohio. Um, so I ended up applying to a pharmacy technician position at Kroger's and I actually got the position there um, as a pharmacy tech and the community of pharmacy, it was just a little stressful. So I, I ended up looking at Humana to work from home. So I applied for the Humana position. My dad actually helped get me the Humana position because he knew somebody who worked for there for them. So that's when I applied for Humana and got the remote job with them and uh, put in my two weeks for the grocery um, community pharmacy job, pharmacy tech job. Good. All right. So let's talk about you. Uh, so we have a lot in common because I've also lived in Ohio. <laughs> so let's talk about you going um, remote as a pharmacy technician. You said that your dad helped you get this job with Humana, mm -hmm. but did you see it posted somewhere? And if so, where? I didn't. My dad, he, um, one of his friends that he went to college with um, at o Ohio University, he went to college with a friend and he actually had the job and he um, referenced them to me. So that's how I got that. Good. So we've had yeah. a couple of ladies um, interviewed a handful of you guys. and We've had a couple of ladies get their jobs through their connections, through their networks. So it's important to talk to people, tell people what you're looking for out yeah. in the world. You don't have to just rely on yourself. You get an extra, you know, a couple extra set of eyeball, eyeballs out there looking for work for you. Yeah. So my, my dad, I, I give a lot of kudos to him because I was really stressed at the uh, pharmacy tech job at the grocery store. It was a lot going on. So um, he helped me get the one through Humana. So I give kudos to him for helping me out with that. So he sent me the link and I applied and just used his reference down. So thanks, dad. Okay. So what did, what did, um, so, so when was this? How long ago was that? Um, I was working at the grocery store for as a pharmacy tech for about a year, and um, I would say closer towards the end of the year at the grocery store as a pharmacy tech, my dad sent me the link for the Humana um, for working from home. And so, I, yeah, I I would um, I've been with Humana now going on seven months. Okay, it's been all it's been about seven months. Yeah, I've been with Humana. Okay, so during yeah. the pandemic, you made the yep. switch. Mm -hmm. I I was a pharmacy technician during normal times. I can't imagine being a pharmacy technician in a pharmacy during yeah. a pandemic. So let's talk about what is better about your job now that you're remote than okay. compared to your life in Kroger. Yeah, I would say it, it's a lot less um, stressful working from home mm -hmm. as a clinical technician versus in the store. In the store. And I'm sure you kind of know, but I don't, I'm not sure how much difference it is with the hospital setting versus in the store, but it, it's just, you're juggling a whole lot more when you're in the store, you're trying to dispense the medications, you're trying to work the cash register, you're, you're trying to do a whole lot at once and it can be overwhelming. People need their medications and stuff, but it, it was a lot more easier for me to transition to the work from home because it's just, just straight mail in. All I do is help people with, you know, getting the med medication sent to them. We do, we do a vacation overrides too, because there'll be people that call in and they'll need their medication six months in advance if they're going out of the country. So we do get a lot of people like that too. So it's just a lot more focused on one area versus like chicken with your head cut off, trying to do like 10 different things at once. So I can yeah. imagine, I can imagine. So do you, uh, what does remote mean to Humana? Where do you have to be to do your job? So I know there's the Ohio location because our, our main dispensing facility is in Ohio, uh, Westchester, Cincinnati. Um, there are some people that can transfer down to Florida, and but you just have to know, um, you have to take a class to understand the Florida state laws of medication if you transfer down there. And I know some, some of my colleagues have transferred to Arizona as well. You just have to understand the Arizona state laws before you get over there. But to my knowledge, it's only Arizona and Florida. I don't know of anything out of the country as far as people working, um, unless you're um, outsourced, but I don't know anybody within the United States that left out of the country to work. Okay, yeah. You just need to be in a state that Humana has uh, whatever that human yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay okay that's good to know do you have any plans for yourself in the future to leave the country you bop around I I would like to I was so I'd like to live in Bali um that's one of the places I would love to live uh, 
I have a whole, I, I want to, I, I don't have any children or um, all I have is like a rabbit and <laughs> a dog. So um, I live with my partner, but I, I do want to travel and leave. I'm not married or have any kids or anything. So I do want to, I just been focused on saving up and paying off student loan debt, but I do eventually plan on moving soon out of the country. Good. I'm glad that you listed out the pros, like you listed out the, the things you have going for you that are going to make this, that make this a good time for you to start. Yeah. Thinking. Okay. Yeah, definitely being optimistic. So I'm just focused, you know, tunnel vision, focused on where I need to go to do what I want to do. So good. Are you still doing graphic design? Is that something that you think? <laughs> so pharmacy technician work, uh, as surprising as it is, you can do pharmacy tech technician work remotely, but, but it's not going to take you around the world. Do you no, think graphic no. design is something that can take can support you wherever you are in the world in Bali on the on the uh, by the pool? Yeah, so um, I do freelance on the side as well. Pharmacy tech is more so just to pay the bills and get out of debt mostly right now. Um, it's, 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 sometimes it's, as you could understand, it's a lot with having to keep up with certifications and registrations and it just, right now I have to do the, I don't feel like doing all that stuff. So I'm like, I still have my degree to back, you know, fall back on my graphic design degree. Um, but um, I do want to get into software engineering more. So I took a few software engineering classes when I went to get my degree in graphic design. So right now I'm working on building my portfolio to get a software engineer job where I can get out of the country and do more with that. So good. So I just talked to Tracy uh, and she said that that is where the money resides. OK, so that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where really where I'm at. So I'm doing after I get done with pharmacy tech, you know, my regular nine to five working from home. Um, I'm doing my portfolio stuff. So that's my main focus, really. But, you know, pharmacy tech pays the bills. So it's cool. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I always I always said I think pharmacy tech is a good um, job for people in transition. You can start in a store without any experience. You can move into a hospital where is, there's more money. Right. So you can start in a store, move into a hospital or as we see now, an insurance company um, and um, you can get a job for a company that's going to pay you good tuition benefits. That's one of the things that hospitals do. They do pay you very good tuition benefits. So I like, I like pharmacy technician as a transitional job for people. Um, and, you know, as a, as, yeah, as a way to, if you want to get more education or get more training in another thing, the, and also pharmacy techs can work all a variety of different hours, different schedules. So if you're in school or if you're doing this or that, it works well. I'm a fan of it. I'm a fan. Pharma Being a pharmacy tech helped me help me decide on what I wanted to do next as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything that we didn't cover for anyone who's looking for a remote pharmacy tech job? Um, it's it's just a lot less stressful. I would I would recommend it to people. You know, transitioning from physically working at a, at a store, or even you know, I I know some people like to work in person, but it's just a lot less stressful on you to work from home and, you know, just focus on one area in pharmacy. So I, I'd recommend it, especially if you're trying to transition and move out of the country and do other things. So good. I agree. You know, I, yeah. I am down with more ease, right? We don't have yeah. to <laughs> the less that. stress is like I work smarter, you know, not harder. So that's my whole, my whole, you know, thing that I live by, so. Okay, so Jamoria, who, when, uh, for anyone who wants to follow you on your journey, where can people follow or subscribe? Yeah, so my, um, my YouTube channel is Jamaria, just my name. That's mostly about just my freeform block uh, journey, but I'm, I'm also going to speak more about transitioning to out of the country and stuff in the future, but yeah, you can follow me at Jamaria. That's my YouTube channel, just my name. Wonderful. Okay. All right. So as I, uh, as you know, I have linked to Jamaria's YouTube channel in the description. So make sure you holler at her. I am so jealous that she, her handle is just her name. I'm so jealous. <laughs> we can get, uh, my name is too common for that, but uh, okay. Thank you so much, Jamaria. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Let's talk to Rock Shimmies about her remote work. Hello. Hey, Rock Shimmies. Hey, girl. Hey, Stephanie. All right, tell us, please, tell us, please, about your remote work. Tell us what you do. Well, right now, I am a case manager for a health insurance company. I do telephonic work, uh, 
Um, I manage and coordinate care for a variety of members, managing their psychosocial, mental, medical care. And I do it all through the comfort of my home and on the phone. That's amazing. Tele, telehealth, right? Healthcare over the phone is a kind of a new concept to me. I guess it's been happening, but since the pandemic, this is much more prevalent. Can you tell us how long you've done this remotely? I actually got hired for the position like a month before the pandemic, and I got my feet wet in it, but it's been about two years, um, and it's been a very interesting journey. Um, there's a lot of flexibility involved, but also just having that work-life balance and being disciplined to be able to meet your assignments and provide care for people, but it's very doable um, in a remote platform. Okay, so when you say case manager, what are you talking? Okay, so I have a panel of patients. Um, prior to the pandemic, I would see them in their homes, in the community, but what happened is um, once we changed to this platform, we end up coordinating care. So whatever concerns they have, like let's say they're having, they're in a psychiatric crisis or they're having chest pain and need to be connected to their doctor or they just got out of a hospital and we want to check to see if they have all the medication, everything that they need in the home. Then I will call them and talk with them or their families and coordinate their care from the comfort of my home, making sure that they have all of the resources that they need to stay out of the hospital and to stay healthy at home. Okay. And so this started uh early uh, early you started this job early 2020 what were you doing before then before you moved into this case manager position um, i actually worked for my company for many years as a case manager and i did the same thing the only difference it was more hands on so mm -hmm. Prior to this position, if someone came out of the hospital, I would actually go into their home, almost like a visiting nurse. And if they had a doctor's appointment, I might be there with them and their family and the primary care physician. And we'd all work very closely together to come up with a plan of care for the patient. Okay. Okay. Is this something that someone in pretty, is this something that anyone in nursing can get into? Do you have an RN or what are your... I'm asking you two different questions at once. <laughs> so um, I am an RN. Um, I've been an RN, oh, wow, going on 20 years. And as far as getting into it, like when I first came out of nursing school eons ago, these opportunities weren't available. But I'm seeing more of a trend where nurses, social workers, behavioral health clinicians are now having opportunities that might not have been presented prior to the pandemic. So this is a great time to hop on the trend of telephone work and a lot of employers that might have been more resistant to offering these type of positions are now opening up in leaps and bounds um, the positions. There's more positions than there are people to fill the roles. Okay, okay. So how is it? What do you like about the way that you do nursing now compared to nursing in person, right? What do you like about it? Is it better? Is it worse? I think I know the answer. <laughs> um, it's, it's a mix. I would say if you are a mom, it's like a mom's dream job because let's say your kid's sick and you would normally, if you have to take time off of work and go, you know, miss a whole entire day trying to bring them to an appointment. But if you're in a remote position, you can kind of flex it to work for you as far as having a better work life balance. Um, the things that I love about it is the flexibility. Um, you don't have to drive over to a building, punch a clock, get dressed, do all of that. You can just, you know, sip your coffee in your favorite items of clothing, whatever that you're wearing at the time, and just still communicate with patients, still communicate with clinicians, um, communicate with other people on your team and still get the job done. Um, the downside to it is that you are home. So if you're a restless person, if you like to be out and about and have to see somebody in person, then it could be a little bit isolating, but you have to know yourself and what you really 
um, want out of life and just tailor the position to what your needs are. Okay, that's good. That's a good point. That's a good point. Someone who is used to seeing patients in person for, you know, for her 20 year career could um, find doing everything over the phone a little um, maybe isolating, maybe like distancing from her patients, especially people who like to care for patients. You know, you get into nursing because you like taking care of patients. And so I can see how that could be a little bit of a, I didn't think about that, how that could be a little bit of a downside. Okay, good. So you, you spoke about the flexibility of the job. How remote is remote? Where do you have to be for your employer to say, okay, that's fine. And how far can you go? Okay. Um, it definitely varies from employer to employer. Um, some of the bigger in, um, insurance companies, um, some other companies might allow you to um, go out of the country. My current employer, um, they just expanded. It used to be that you had to stay in the state where you live. Um, I currently reside in Massachusetts. However, one of the things that happened with the pandemic is that they had to be more flexible. So now they open the option so that you can work anywhere in the country. So oh. yeah, so all 50 states. So I am, I'm actually getting ready to move to a sunnier location. So um, I'm able to take that job with me, which is a huge perk. So if you are like me, who is just like sick of the snow and want to get to some place that's got some sunshine, um, you can rest assured that your job is still secure because you can just take your computer equipment and pack it in the U-Haul and go live your sunshine life. That's elsewhere. wonderful. I'm surprised to hear that. And I'm super excited. I'm surprised that your uh, company is like fine wherever in the country. That's fine. Uh, because nurses have licenses that are state. Is your license not state specific? Um, my license is state specific, but because um, I have a Massachusetts license and all of the members reside in this state, oh, I can yeah. still practice. It would come into an issue if I um, tried to practice and care for residents in the state that I'd be moving to. I would have to get a license for that state and work with a company that allows um, you to care for members there. That's good to know. So your clients have to be in the state, not necessarily you. That's wonderful. Okay. I'm also super excited to hear that you're moving to sunnier, uh, to a sunnier location. Uh, I think it's going to be too late to miss the snowstorm because as we are speaking, y'all have a big storm coming your way. Am I right? Yes, it, apparently so. Tomorrow is the day and the start of some more snow bird type of weather. Like, no, I'm over it. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. How soon do you think you'll, you'll be out? Do you have a date yet? An estimated date for when you leave? I don't have an exact date, but I do have someone looking very, very heavily. So we're exploring properties at this time. As soon as we, we catch a good one, hello, we're out. We are out of here. <laughs> Good. I hope that's soon. I hope that's soon. I hope that you can skip the rest of winter. I hope. <laughs> All right. So let's talk. So you told us that you were already with the company. Am I, I may be getting confused. You were already with the company when they decided to go remote. Okay. That is correct. Do you remember how you learned about this job in the first place? This company in the first place? Um, well, actually, it was a very, <laughs> it was an interesting situation. I went to get a beauty treatment done. Um, and the person who was actually doing the treatment was a nurse practitioner. And she was like, oh, you know what? I work for an insurance company. Like she had multiple hustles at the time. And um, she told me about it. I interviewed, I got the job and I've been with them for many years. Um, and from there, they started to expand their model of care because they realized they had so many patients who can't lay hands on every single person. So they opened up remote options and then they've just expanded from there um, because of the pandemic. They've increased the flexibility. I'm interviewing a handful of women about their remote jobs. And this is a very common th thread or theme of these interviews getting the job or getting at least alerted of the job 
through your network, right? Through people that you know. When you need a job, you tell people. When you're looking for a job or when you do something, when you do something, you tell people about it. Your network can go into action for you um, in a more far-reaching way than you can. They know about positions. They know about things that you don't know about yet. So that's, that's I hope that everybody's watching is taking note of how many times uh, women have said, I, I know about this company or this position because a person, this, this particular person told me. Yeah, that's yeah. important. Yeah, the power of people is definitely going to be stronger than the power of a resume. A resume gets lost in a sea of other, you know, applicants. But if you know someone, every single job I've ever had, even from high school till now, it was because I knew somebody and it didn't have to be someone close. You could just be going to get a service done and then ask somebody, you know, hey, is there something happening in your field or what have you? And they'll be happy to refer you and share the information. If the vibe is right, they get a feel for your personality, they can refer you for the job. Yes, yes, that's a wonderful um, point to make and to reiterate, right? Yeah, that's super important. We sometimes are used to doing things alone, especially black women, we're used to doing it alone, figuring it out on our own open up your mouth, say, say what you need. Somebody can go into, into action for you in ways that you can't alone. And like you said, your resumes, other people can have a much better reach than your resume can have. That's a great point. All right, so let me know, Rakshamis, what did we not cover today for someone who is uh, in nursing and is considering moving into a remote position? What, what do you think we need to let her know? that we haven't covered yet? Um, what the biggest thing is that it's not as complicated as it might seem. Um, a lot of times, even as black women, we have these perfectionism ideas of how things have to be a certain way and you have to have this kind of credential and that kind of credential. You do not need a doctorate degree to do this. Um, you can go to a two year program program at like your local community college, start off with an associate's degree, um, build from there, get your skills in, you know, get your skills up and then you can get a bachelor's degree. There's a lot of two year colleges that offer like one year programs, online programs. You can get your nursing degree online. Yes. And from there, just start applying, seeing what's out there because I'm seeing more and more companies want those type of clinicians that have the skills and the flexibility to be able to be disciplined enough to work in the home. Um, so I think this is gonna be here to stay. I think the, regardless of how the pandemic shifts, remote work is here to stay. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, thank you so much, Rock Shimmy. So if anybody wants to follow you somewhere on the internet, where should they go? Okay, um, if anyone wants to keep in touch, um, you can find me at Rock Shimmies on Instagram. I also have a website. Um, I am a <laughs> certified yoga teacher and a stress management consultant as well. So you can always hit me up on my website at rockshimmies.com. And I'm in the process of creating a self-care channel specializing in helping Black women live their best lives through the art of self-care. So more to come with that on YouTube. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Appreciate you as well, Stephanie. Have a blessed day. All right, friends. Meet Tracy Carpenter. Hi, Tracy. Hi. <laughs> all right. So tell us what you do and where you are and all of that. Um, well, I, um, I'm currently in California. I just sold my house. So I am on my way to be a nomad and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so I'm on a journey. I work in healthcare IT. I am a, um, a systems analyst uh, for a laboratory. Um, and I kind of became remote through a journey. I started out working for the vendor um, uh, about 10 years ago. And then I um, switched departments and switched to a department that was allowing uh, people to go remote. So I jumped on the opportunity to be remote and I have been working remote ever since then. So that was back in 2015. Um, yeah. That's wonderful. I, okay, so you were already working for, so you don't work for a particular like hospital, you work for someone who 
provide services for a hospital or something like that. That's right? part of the journey. So after I left the, 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 the vendor, um, the software company, um, I became a consultant um, and started consulting for hospitals. And then I was employed by a hospital recently um, okay. that I had been consulting for. Great, okay. And so this remote consulting job for the hospital, what is the uh, benefit of being remote for them compared to just working there, working in the hospital? Uh, well, there's a lot of, there's some benefits and some drawbacks. Um, one of the benefits is that it's a quiet environment on, on the most part. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting pinged constantly throughout the day. However, um, I don't have people come into my office and grabbing me. I don't have the noise of the hospital. And I have not had to expose myself to COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so th that those are huge benefits for me. Um, and i um, really happy about those. Uh, some of the drawbacks are that um, you rely on other people to do your hands-on work. So if I need to print a label or something like that, I have to rely on a coworker or somebody in the hospital to do it for me and to actually check it and, and work with me. So I have to find partners who are located on site so that I don't miss a beat. Um, and, and so I, don't, I never recommend for anybody, and I've actually left other positions with other hospitals because they didn't bring me on site so that I could meet people and form relationships. Um, because that's, a, that's necessary for me to do my job because I'm so dependent on other people to kind of help me um, with my job, you know, with aspects of it. How well does that work? Do you find that the other people are fine with being your hands <laughs> while you're working remotely? Or is, is there like some contention or it's all good? Yeah, yeah, there's contention always. Um, but there are, there, I also have partners. So they can text me or email me and I'll get their work done for them. And then I can text them and email them and they'll do it for me. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, can you do me a favor? And they're like, sure, yes, Tracy, because you always help me. And I have those types of relationships with people but you have to like kind of go on site and and spend a little bit of time to form the trust the bonds with with co-workers in order to get that okay all right so can we talk a little bit about so um, it to me is a field that is kind of broad yeah right? and yes. so someone who someone may be doing something else in it is this okay so is what you do healthcare? I'm sorry, your actual title is systems analyst? Yes, yeah, yes. Is, is this something that someone else who does something else in IT might want to consider transitioning into so that they can work remotely if they're doing something that requires them to be on site and there's no possibility of being remote? Is this something that you would recommend for someone else who's totally ready to go fully remote? Um, at this point... Um, okay, so if you are, if you're willing to stay in the United States, oh. then this is definitely something that I would um, recommend because they need really talented people in, in hospitals. Um, the people tend not to be too savvy. And so if you are savvy and people person, right? If you have people skills, because <laughs> it takes, because people in, in healthcare from doctors all the way down are not technologically savvy. So they really do need help. And it's, it's a great opportunity for somebody who's not like, you may not be like a tech person. Like I'm not really a, the, the best tech person. I'm not the best coder. I'm not the best anything um, in terms of technology. I, I started out as a, you know, like in, in mental health. And then I went to became a teacher, you know, so I've always just been somebody who's been interested in it, but I don't have any, you know, formal training in technology. I don't have a tech degree. I basically started out as a trainer and they trained me on everything I needed to know. And I just dug my heels in and, and dedicated myself to learning because it was definitely more ludicrous, uh, uh, not ludicrous. <laughs> Some days it is ludicrous. <laughs> lucrative, mm. so much more lucrative than what I was doing before. <laughs> Very yeah. lucrative. All right, so let's Lots talk about of money. that. Lots of money? <laughs> Lots of money. 
Yes. Without, without a degree in the field, just with experience. So you talked about 2015. Is 2015 when you started initially or 2015 is when you went remote? So 20, yeah, 2015 was when I started. 2012, I started, um, I started uh, working in the field. So I was, I actually, you have to have a degree of some kind, like associates or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I had a PhD. I had gone for a PhD. I could not get a job teaching at a university. And so I was like, it was the recession, 2009. So I just took a chance and started from the bottom in this company. And then because I had education experience, they were like, oh yeah, we want you to be a trainer. So I became a trainer and then dug in and they liked me. I made relationships, networking, that's such a big thing deal because somebody else knew, liked me and knew they were getting ready to fire my whole training department mm -hmm. and they pulled me into support. And so the idea is you can start in support and work your way up and learn whatever you want to learn, um, whatever your strengths are, whatever you like. I got in, onto a great support team and then a lot of people from go, can go from that to consulting or working for a vendor or what have you. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Okay, that's really good to know. Okay, so tech yeah. support is an entry level path to yes. what you do today. Yeah. All right. What you do today is very lucrative. So yes. let's talk about the, the remote though, because you're mm -hmm. saying that you you are, I think you might be ready to bop around the world, not just the country. I am. Okay. Yes. So this this particular employer is is this particular employer down with you being wherever in the world, or are there stipulations? No, there are stipulations. And they, um, they have just adopted this recently at this hospital. And a lot of hospitals are because of COVID. They're hiring a lot of consultants right now. A lot of them are. Um, so they're becoming open to, to remote work, but they have uh, limitations. Like they, in the beginning, they would hire us from any, we could work in any state. Now they're limiting what states we can work in because of labor laws. Okay. Um, and they will not let me work outside the, uh, you know, move outside the country. I can go on workcations. I can go on vacation, you know, and take my computer with me and work for a certain amount of time. But they, I have to get my manager to approve it. Mm -hmm. And I did ask if I could move outside the country and they said no. Okay. Since, yeah. since you're here, this, I would love to say this out loud, right? I do not recommend you, and I know you also do not recommend that we, that people sneak and work from no. abroad. You they cannot. Know, they know not where possible. you are. Can't they know. do it. They you know where you are. That VPN. They know where their stuff is. They know where their phones are, their computers. They track that and they know exactly where you are. That so VPN you can't do only it. has so much ability. They know where you are and yes. you're really getting fired, right? So yes. if, you, if you cannot afford to live abroad after you get fired, <laughs> you cannot take your job abroad <laughs> without the permission of your employer. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't do it. It's not worth it. Well, you know, I'm thinking about doing it because I'm like, well, maybe if they fire me, I... No. <laughs> <laughs> is that the plan let's see let's see <laughs> that's on a bad day on a bad day that's my plan i'm like i'm just gonna take this stuff and see how long it lasts <laughs> let's see if unemployment let's see if i can get some unemployment but so I, I perked up when you said that you had done consulting work so consulting yeah. work you can be wherever you choose to be exactly. so is that, the, is that how you plan to do this going forward that's I when i I'm, I, I, I am considering, I'm considering that. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. I, I'm, I'm toying between starting my own consulting company um, or, you know, taking consulting gigs. Like they have what they call corp to corp consulting. So you could actually start your own consulting company and then you can work through like the big ones for the hospitals. Um, and uh -huh. you can do it that way. Yeah, okay. but I'm still not sure about whether the hospitals will limit where you work from I'm, yes. because of, you know, PHI, patient care issues, licensing mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. That's so right. I'm still working on working that out. Okay, I hope that works out. I hope uh, maybe we can Me figure too. out a way to, for you to keep us posted on this. Sure, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I want to see how that works out for you. All yeah. right, but you can, but you could for now bop around California. Is that right? If you. Yeah. Um, um, and yeah, and another thing is that my company is in New Jersey. 
Um, my hospital is in New Jersey. So I'm actually leaving California and figuring out what's next until I can't anymore. So I'm going to see if they'll let me be a digital nomad in the U.S. Uh -huh. <laughs> All you can do, right? All you can do is ask. You never know. Yeah. These are these are crazy times, right? It's right, right. <laughs> Things we never thought would happen are happening. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, so did, do you feel like, how do you think we did? Did we cover any, did we cover, did we not cover anything that someone interested in remote IT, getting started in remote IT would need to know? Um, no, well, one more thing I wanted to mention too, is that um, if you are working in the hospital, if so, from the other end, if you're in the hospital, working in the hospital, you could actually move into that, this field that way as well. Um, so that's another thing to consider. So say like um, you're a lab tech, or I can speak for the lab, uh, a nurse, um, you know, uh, working in the hospital, you can actually move into these positions. They're in desperate need of lab techs, for example, right now. And that is a long term, it takes a little longer, but that's a long term way of thinking about going into this, uh, into an analyst positions as well. Leaving from a different department in the hospital and moving into like tech mm -hmm. support and then analyst yeah. work. Yeah, you can go into tech support in the hospital. You can change positions in the hospital. Like they have, everybody has a help desk, right? Yes. And you can go from working in one, you know, one area into the help desk. It's because those degrees do not matter. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, your experience and who you know. So apply for those positions. So <laughs> should, can someone get a like certification through Google or something? Yeah, you can get certifications, um, but it's easier to get them in the, on the job. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of different ways and it's not cut and dry. So they do ask for a degree. It's like, you must have a computer science degree. But if you get the right certifications, that degree doesn't matter. They want to know if you can do the job. And a lot of people don't even have those degrees. Mm -hmm. You can get certifications. You can get certificates. Uh, you can get associate's degrees mm -hmm. pretty easily. Yeah, there's a lot of methods to doing it. Wonderful. And one thing hospitals do, uh, I, hospitals are, to me, hospitals are not the best at giving you your time off, right? Mm -hmm. Hospitals have make exactly. you beg for your time off. But one thing they do is they do pay for your education. They right. do pay for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if you can make the case for whatever you want to apply for or, um, you know, get yourself into a position, they will, they pay, you get a lot of training that's covered um, as part of your position. You may have to do the training on your own time, but, you know, look, it's worth it, you know, to get it paid for. Good. I'm glad. Okay. So right now I'm sure somebody is doing some like research on Glassdoor to see what, <laughs> what, what, see what the money's looking like. Okay. Thank you yeah. so much, Tracy. I appreciate you coming on and sharing this information with us. You're welcome. Thank you for taking the time. You're welcome. And, and we'll keep, we, I, I do want to, I do listen, uh, holler at me one day, give me an update on what's going on. I want to know about your bopping around plan. And oh, I want to yeah. know about if you do, do uh, pick back up in the consulting world or not. All right, so I promised you a couple of really helpful remote work resources. The first one is the Work From Anywhere Toolkit. The Work From Anywhere Toolkit is a toolkit that I put together along with my business partner, Rashida Dow, to help you find remote work and thrive or enjoy remote work. The first link in the Work From Anywhere Toolkit is Libria Jones's Remote Ready Bundle. This bundle is fire, okay? I don't even want a job, and I think that Libria's Remote Ready Job Bundle could get me in a job, in a remote job, in a heartbeat, okay? I've heard only good things. Every time I do a live stream and we start talking about remote work, someone in the live stream says, that Remote Ready Bundle helped me find my remote job. Okay, so the first link in the Work From Anywhere Toolkit is a link to, uh, to Libria's Remote Ready Bundle. 
The work from anywhere toolkit also includes some like cost of living calculators so you can figure out where in the world you can afford to go on your income and some other awesome resources to help you thrive in your new life abroad. Libria's Remote Ready Bundle goes hand in hand with a very good interview that Libria did on Rashida Dow's channel, which is Sheeta's on the Loose. The interview is called Getting Remote Work with Libria Jones. Okay, so I'm gonna to link to that video here in the description. So my recommendation is that you click the link for the Remote Ready Bundle and click the link for the uh, YouTube video, Getting Remote Work with Libria Jones, so that you'll be ready once you get the bundle to know how to do your job search. Resource number two that I think you need is the new House Sitter Toolkit. House sitting and remote work are besties, okay? I'm a year-round house sitter. I run my business remotely, but if you're not running your own business, you can also house sit while working remotely. You can house sit while not working, but while being retired, while collecting alimony, I don't care. House sitting works for you. House sitting is the way that I have gotten to see the world on a budget, and I mean a budget, okay? So the new house sitter toolkit is at house sit dot vicarious dot com slash toolkit. I know it's a lot. House it dot vicarious dot com slash toolkit. That link is in the description. You uh, the toolkit will help you book your first house sit and it will also give you some resources to help you enjoy that house sit be comfortable and uh, safe while you're out house sitting. All right. So we've learned today that your remote job could be the job that you're on now. You just need to negotiate remote work with your employer, or it could mean that you need to take the same skill that you have over to a more remote friendly employer. Or we also learned that you may need to jump into an entirely new career. Some of these women had really good info about how to get into their field so that you could be more remote work ready, right? And find jobs that are more remote work friendly. So again, thank you so much, friends, for coming in to share this. Don't forget to go over and follow these ladies. The links to their Instagrams and YouTube channels are in the description. Thanks again, Tracy, Angela, Jamaria, Rock Shimmies, and Kiki, Lakeisha. Thanks, guys. All right, so you've made it all the way to the end of this video. I have a couple more videos that I think you will like. The first video I think you might be interested in is called Stop Applying for Jobs, and you can find that video here, all right? So if you're watching this video, but you know good and well, you don't need a remote job, you just need to earn more income in the side business that you run, watch this video. It's for you, all right? I also have a video on what happens when you move abroad and hate it there. It happens. There are some ways that you can protect yourself. You can watch that video here. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Please take a second and like this video. Share it with someone who'd be interested in finding remote work. I'll see you next time. Bye.